I'm Gary welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before today is box opening day on the kit of the week chosen by you the lovely viewers and that kit is of course the 172nd style short sterling from Italeri. I'll be having a look at uh, the history of the kit and of sterlings in plastic in general and then I'll have a closer look at what you get in the box for your money now if you're thinking of getting one of these, then this is most definitely a video for you. If you've already got one, then look out for the production videos as they appear on my channel. Best way of doing that is to subscribe and hit the bell, then you'll get notifications. And of course, if you like what you see, always give it the thumbs up on the button below. And if you want to make a more concrete com contribution to future productions, you can do that through Super Thanks or any of my partner programs. Enough of all of that. Let's crack on and make a start on the history of this kit, the short sterling in 172nd scale from Italeri. This kit of the short sterling Mark III was released by Italeri in 2022. It's based on the Sterling Mark IV kit that was released in 2014 as a new tooling in time for the 70th anniversary of D-Day. The following year, Italeri released a Sterling Mark I with significant new parts such as gun turrets and bombs and deleting the glider towing rig of the Mark IV. The Mark III Sterling shares many of its parts with this later kit. Other than Italeri, the only manufacturer to have issued a Sterling in 172nd scale has been Airfix. That tooling dates from 1966 and I know many viewers will remember it with fondness in any of its many guises since. It was also marketed by MPC in 1969. But for many the Airfix kit, in black plastic, with six crew figures and even a bomb truck and tractor, is a treasured childhood memory. The last reboxing of this kit was in 2013, still as a main offer item and not as a vintage classic. It seems well overdue for a retooling. Sanger did make a 148th scale kit in vac form plastic with metal accessories, as did ID models, later Tigger models, with a 132nd scale kit more than two decades ago. So here is this impressive Sterling Mark III. The top of the box comes off like so. Let's see what we get inside. First of all, we have the instruction sheet here. We'll go through these in a bit more detail later, but they look great. We have several bags full of parts. There's one bag with two sprues there. Um, another sprue and some clear parts here. And another two sprues in here. So six sprues of plastic all together, five grey and one transparent. Again, we'll have a closer look at the sprues in a moment. There is, of course, a decal sheet. These look pretty good at first glance, but again, we'll have a closer look later on. There's some photo etch. Oh joy, some photo etch to do. Not very much of it, actually, so we're not too worried about that. And there's a little correction thing on, on the Sterling Mark III not to include these um, filters here on the top of the engine and air inlet on the top of the engine don't use those so that's it let's have a look at these parts in a bit more detail 
Sprue A contains the fuselage halves, the cockpit area, the bomb bay structure, um, gun sights and other bits and pieces. Sprue B is the starboard wing, ailerons, I think that's probably the rudder. Sprue C is the port wing, ailerons, the rudder, sorry the other one was the fin, this is the rudder and also uh, some rear turret parts. Sprue D, um, bomb bay doors, bombs, the uh, one of the tailplanes, the um, horizontal stabilizers, H2S dome if you want it, engine parts, wheels, wheels are huge, undercarriage parts, undercarriage is enormous on the Sterling as we know, um, propellers, engine, nacelles and so on. And there's another copy of Sprue D with exactly the same things for the other side of the aircraft. Sprue E is all the transparencies, the very large cockpit covering area, nose cover, uh, that's the chin area for the nose, side windows, uh, machine gun turrets of course, and things like that, landing lights and whatever, or oh, observer's dome as well if you want one. There's a sheet of photo etch here as well, um, instrument panel, crew, straps and harnesses, bits for the engine. Um, this I think is a, a something that curls around, something that looks like a heater. Um, there are chutes for, at the back for um, machine gun empties to be thrown out, there are machine gun mounts and so on and so forth. Not too many fortunately. And then the decal sheets. There are markings for five different aircraft. The uh, roundels and fin bars are the same for all. There's some different nose art on four of the aircraft and the reddish um, ID numbers and ID letters. Common parts down here, common stencils. These green things, I'm gonna guess are for the bombs off the top of my head and all sorts of things, the instrument panel. Instrument panel looks really nice. Um, all very clean, all very clear. Yep, they look fine. The printing close up is very fine indeed. I think it looks nice. Um, you can see pencil here for scale. Instrument panel looks very sharp and crisply printed, especially with the white on the instruments. That's actually very nice. The stencils here are very clean and very crisp. Um, they're printed by Zanchetti Buccinasco. In Milan, um, they're as good as anything from Cartograph or Tech Mod. That's for certain. The instructions uh, come as an A4 leaflet. Uh, it is in mono. There's no color, no spot color, but that's you know it's not the end of the world. Um, there's maps of the sprues here, which is obviously always useful. Suggested colors here, um, mainly Federal Standard colors, um, with a Italy acrylic paint callouts if you happen to have those. Um, the view is you know pretty standard three quarter higher orthographic view, nicely shaded, and yeah yeah they're good. They seem clear enough at the moment at least clear enough. Bits where you have to fold up photo etch. Really look, looking forward to that. Um, alternative versions with the bomb bay closed or open of course. Wheels up or down. The wheels are looking like they're going to be fun. Engines are all very nice. There's quite a lot of parts of the engine there. And these little chutes at the tail gun for the spent cases to go out. And these bits here, all photo etch, of course. Um, they suggest here stirred plastic. I think they mean stretched plastic. Um, we'll see if we can find something better than that. And then we have the schemes. Now, what is interesting is they have templates here for the chutes that you would chuck window out. Window was the uh, strips of aluminium coated paper or foil that was cut to length to full German radar. And the chutes go underneath here and they haven't included it in the kit. So, they've, so if you want to make them, make two sides, a top and a front like that, bang them on. That will be it. 
would have liked them to have actually put it in the kit obviously which would have been better so we have um we have five color variants we have um an aircraft from 199 squadron at north creek air base and ref north creek surely also another aircraft from 199 squadron at north creek um an aircraft from 90 squadron at Ratting Common. 149 Squadron at Mildenhall. And 1660 Conversion Unit at Swinderby. This one has got the H2S dome on it. This is the one I'm kind of tempted to paint because I like an H2S dome. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm likely to do this one. We'll see, but that's what I'm likely to do. Unless I get tempted by something with nose up. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do that with the H2S. So there we go. That's the um, book clip. Why that lot are in colour and they don't bother colouring the rest? I don't know. It's probably a cost thing. But yeah. Odd things happen. If we look at some of the parts in close up here. You can see on the side of the fuselage. All the rivet holes are done it all looks very nice whether they're accurate or not i couldn't tell you because i don't know that much about a sterling but i'm going to guess they're going to be pretty close to what was there originally the plastic looks sharp enough um it's got a nice you know, solid feel to it. it doesn't feel milky or soft or anything um the moldings are nice the sprue design is generally speaking quite sensible it seems to me um, you know, bits don't look like they're going to break when I take them off the sprue, which is sometimes very much not the case. Um, even the interior floors, so if you can catch that, yep, has got the riveting on the interior floor. I mean, there's a even these this piercing on the um, on the stairway. There's an awful lot of detail on this kit, nice inside of the door, so that door's definitely got to be open. But then, you know, does it open in or out? If it opens inwards, I'm still not going to see it. So, yeah, anyway. There is a lot of detail here, and my only comment on the amount of detail is, uh, you know, you've got the canopy area here, and, and, here, and you've got a, a machine gun there, you know, gun turret. Um, under here is Bombay, nose and chin. There's not a lot of glass to be looking through to be able to see stuff like this, which will be, you know, over, over here somewhere. The windows aren't that big. Um, there's a, there is a door which will be open, but again, it's not going to be... I think a lot of this detail, and interior detail is going to be grand to make but i think an awful lot of it's going to be lost when we actually build the kit but we'll see i'll make it anyway i'll do it anyway um but i'm not going to spend masses of time over it because i think unless you are doing a version with a bit of the plane that can come off and all that then i think it's probably just a bit too much um in terms of mold uh the actual molding I don't know, so something that, that concerns me a little is this this uh, this fuselage line here. And you can see at the edges it's rounded, which kind of suggests either it's not moulded absolutely sharply or, or not even designed absolutely sharply, or um, there's, there's a little bit of flash there that needs taking off. Um, the under, other end of the Bombay is very similar. It kind of makes getting these lines matched up properly a bit difficult if... The, the end is curved because it wouldn't have been it would have been straight um, the other thing I'm not sure about is the way that the wings go in we'll see how it goes later but um, having these slots with the a, a thing here to, to fit I'm not convinced by that um, if you look at say the FX Lancaster or the Wellington or indeed the B-17, they all have through spars to support the wings, which I think is a much better idea. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. It may be that this is a perfectly good fit and it goes down really well. 
Um, it might be that it doesn't. I don't know yet. We'll see. But anyway, overall, the plastic looks good. The plastic looks clean and pretty sharp. The um, panel lines are quite deep. That's going to be great for doing the decals over here, but also with the black sur surface up, up to sort of about that level. All of this is black. So with the deeper lines, we can use a, a sort of a slightly greyish wash to bring out these lines. And we may even be able to bring out some of this um, rivet detail along here. We'll see how that goes. But I've got a panel wash for black aircraft, so... That may well do the trick. Anyway, we'll um, get all this primed now because I love to prime kits before I start them. Just a, a quick coat of grey primer and we'll get on with making our sterling. There we have it. Quite a detailed little kit. I think you'll agree. Not so little actually. It's quite a big chunk. So uh, come back again for production videos. Uh, remember, if you want to be told when they arrive, do subscribe and hit the bell. And if you like what you see, thumbs up, please, if you would, on the button below. Do come back soon. I hope to see you then. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.